Well, I don't even need to proud. I was going to say, if, if this isn't on YouTube, it's on fucking Rumble. So, you know. Yeah. You're probably going to take this down. See, ya. See you guys on Rumble. Every family who never imagined their loved one would be taken from our lives by a bullet from a gun. Uh, we did not bring the bodies and the families into contact. We took uh, pictures of them. You can sort of, uh, you can control the situation. Uh, depending on your photographer, and I have very good photographers, uh, but uh, uh, all the ones that I know of at this point were caused by the uh, the long the long weapon. So the, the, the rifle was the primary weapon. Yes. You said it was the long rifle that was used. Yes. But the long rifle was, was discovered in the car. I hope uh, the people of Newtown uh, don't have a crash on their head later. But. Hey, welcome to another episode of the Godspeed Podcast. I'm your host, Joe Guy. And I am Danny. It's everything. How is Vegas, buddy? Vegas, <sighs> baby! Uh, love Vegas. Vegas loves me. Vegas loves me. Can I tell you that? Um, <clears throat> All right. Usually go there. Surprise, surprise. Hit a couple buffets. Um, do a little gambling. I would say probably 70% of the time I always leave with more money than I went with. And that's after paying for my food and hotel and yada, yada, yada. So yeah. I get I get very lucky in Vegas. I don't know what it is, man. There, don't, don't get me wrong. There's times I left there down. But 70% of the time I leave up. Nice. Yeah, it was I a remember. good time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I used to live there. <laughs> I was dude. I was driving out there. I was like, "Man, I really miss Joe living in Vegas." There was a whole nother reason to fucking come here. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Now I just go to Vegas to fucking gamble. Before, at least I got to see you, and we go shoot guns and yeah. You know, it was a good time. It's a, yeah, it's a good thing we still have the ability to shoot guns in this country. It's a beautiful thing, but uh, they are working yeah. on it. Did, speaking of, did you see what our uh, speaking of this episode? Did you see what our uh, our uh, wandering leader uh, said at a at a rally just recently? He he said again. Um, he goes, <laughs> "If we get out of line, what are you going to do? He, your your rifles aren't going to do anything. You're going to need F-15s." Yeah. If we get out of line. What are you going to do, pretty much? Yeah. Bro. Say it again. I'm working at, we're going to do a Biden episode pretty soon, too. Cool. Does it, yeah. Will it have a map attached so people can fucking fi find him? Because he doesn't know where the fuck he is. <laughs> uh, yeah, something like that. Do you know what we're doing today? I don't, but... Uh... No, I don't. It has to do with them trying to take our guns. Oh, then I'm, I'm very excited about this. Let's let's dance. All let's, right, let's dance. Uh, so back in 2012, there was something happened in Connecticut, and the whole country was up in arms about it, and uh, they tried to take our guns afterward. Obama did like 28 executive orders to try to take our guns, and. Um, do you remember? Um, so there, it was in Connecticut. So I'm just assuming a lot of people were being assholes for no reason. <laughs> rich people. Um, hey, I'm a rich person. You better be nice. I, 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 I'm not talking shit on rich people. I'm talking about Connecticut's. Connecticut's. Uh, yes, yeah, today we're talking about um, she's. We just call it. We're gonna we're gonna call it she's, she's, yeah she's. You ever met that hooker Sandy? I have not met that hooker Sandy. <laughs> have you yeah, met? So that's what we're talking about have, today. Have you met the hooker Sandy? I've delved into the hooker Sandy. Yeah. 
took a deep dive. Have you not? I have not. Well, I'm gonna shove you down there, bud. Can I, can I bring? <laughs> can we use protection? I hope you do. <laughs> Although you won't need it because Tell there me. weren't any, there weren't any weapons. So, uh, yeah, this this has fallen off a cliff. This whole entire line of talking. <laughs> uh, <laughs> of course, correct, Joseph. Yeah, so this guy you're about to see, his name is Wolfgang, and uh, he's going to tell you a few uh, a few things. Wolfgang Puck? Wolfgang Halabala? I don't remember. Have you been to Wolfgang Puck's restaurant? I have. Were you impressed? Don't remember. Um, specific probably every, every every place I ate in Vegas when I would visit there anyway before I lived there I liked so my last trip to Hawaii there was uh, I stayed at this little hotel and downstairs there was a Wolfgang Puck pizzeria and it was dog shit thanks a lot Wolfgang man you suck Wolfgang keep Wolf- poisoning the citizens Wolf- with your fucking mucus Wolfgang suck well, this Wolfgang doesn't suck. Okay. And, uh, there you go. Sprinkle it on me. 1994, when I became a director of school safety, the first thing I realized in my school district of 65,000 students, we had no plan. How in the world do you run a 65,000 student school district and not know what you're going to do if there's a shooting? So we did have a shooting. We did have stabbings. We did have gang members. And then the superintendent says, Wolfgang, write a plan. We sold 10,000 of these all over the country. This is a color-coded emergency management plan, and we pray to God that no school district ever has to say the words, code red. It's breaking news, shots fired, Connecticut. Ladies and gentlemen, I couldn't get, I couldn't take my eyes off the TV. I'm a national school safety consultant, and they had me hooked. Are you sure? Ladies and gentlemen, touched my heart all day long. I could not get away from that TV. In the first week, I actually donated money to the same promise fund. Because when you have tragedy, the first thing we can do as people of this country is we donate. I donated. And a week later, a week later, I finally woke up. Something is not right. What's not right, Wolfgang? 935. 43, the first 911 call comes in. It's from a lady called Barbara Halstead. Her husband happens to be the fire chief at the St. Cook Volunteer Fire Department. I go to the call for service report that the 911 dispatchers are supposed to maintain, right? What am I looking for at 935-43? What should that call for service show me? Shots fired. Guess what it says? Unwanted person. What? Response code, medium. That even have a high priority code. It should have listed what? Shots fired. Because that gives you the highest priority. It's an all call, all hand on deck. Everybody's hauling butt. And how did I verify it? I go to the incident reports. Guess what the incident report says? Unwanted person. There is not one mention ever of shots fired at Sandy Hook. John 911, what's the location of the emergency? Sandy Hook School. I think there's somebody shooting in here. School. Okay, what makes you think that? Because somebody's got a gun. I thought a glimpse of somebody they're running down the hallway. Okay. Well, they're still running. They're still shooting. We have 911 calls coming in, four of them, in a matter of seven minutes, and every one of them screaming, shots fired, shots fired, and they send out the call as a trespasser. We think about that so far. It's a it's a shul shooting, and uh, they they don't even give it a high priority. Some but there's yeah. some ain't right. Math ain't mathing right yeah. now. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. All right, we'll just keep going. Yeah, I need, I need some more. <laughs> All right. There's a Lieutenant Van Galley, Newtown Police Lieutenant, in the hallway, runs into a first grade little girl. It could be your little girl. He sees her, he grabs her, he opens the door and pushes her into classroom eight. Tells her, get in there, I'll be back when it's safe. Closes the door. Now, somebody explain to me what classroom eight is. That's the room where all the children were shot and killed. And he shoves her back into the room. Can you imagine the emotional distress that the girl is going to encounter seeing all those dead bodies, the body fluids, the blood splatter, brain tissues, and he pushes her in the room and leaves her? That's negligence. We know better. 
Two minutes later, two Connecticut State Troopers go into room 10. They walk in. They see a little boy hiding behind the toilet. Tell the little boy, okay, you're going to be safe. Stay right there. Don't move. We'll be back when it's safe. What's room 10? That's the other room the teachers and children were shot and killed. And that's where Adam Lanza supposedly shot and killed himself. And they leave that little boy behind the toilet? That in itself raises a red flag. No police officers would ever, ever leave a child in that position. They would take him with them. They would get him out of there. What do you think about that? Uh, <laughs> Cops <clears throat> bust it. Cops go to save kids and they leave them in the rooms where all the dead bodies are. What would you do if you were a cop? Would you leave little kids in there? <laughs> he pushes her back in the room, actually. It doesn't the first one, he doesn't even leave. They push her back in the room and say, stay right there. It it just doesn't sound right. But keep going. Yeah. Right. Tell me right, man. Yeah. Tell me right here. Yeah. I know. I'm suspicious. But the only way you can ever find out the truth is you ask the right questions. And what you do is you, lose a me you use a mechanism called freedom of information, and it's the best way to get public records. Connecticut FOIA is basically a government agency that says you have a right to know. Any person has a right to know when the governments spend taxpayers' money, okay? You have a right to know. And you know what? I'm asking them using school board policies and procedures. These questions are so simple. They're not offensive to any parent. It's not offensive to any of the children. And when you refuse to answer a simple question, to me, serious red flags. Who was the person, the incident commander, who refused to pick up the phone and call the trauma helicopters? Who's the incident commander that morning who did not ever allow the paramedics and the EMTs to enter Sandy Hook Elementary School based on their sworn police affidavits. They were told to stand outside in the triage area where you see the red tarp, the yellow tarp. They were to stand there and not come inside. The next three people that go into school is Colgrim, Officer Smith, and Officer Seabrook. Not one of them is a paramedic or an EMT. So who declared all those children dead within the first eight minutes? So... The only person that could declare, could declare someone dead is a doctor, EMT, you know what I mean? And nobody was allowed in the school. The only three people that went in the school were three police officers. And they didn't let anybody else in the school because they said everybody was dead. They set up those tarps outside, the color-coded tarps, because, like, uh, red is critical condition, yellow is medium condition, like, and green is, like, they're going to be okay. They have, like, flesh wounds and shit like that. And they didn't even fill any of those tarps. This uh, this Sophia Smallstorm is about to talk right now, and she goes into more about uh, about all that. Uh, we did see start tarps on the day of Sandy Hook. They were empty. The white mounds you see in these pictures are actually emergency gear. Ambulance crews learned that no bodies were coming out. They would be kept in the building to which only the police had access. Ambulances were made to wait down the street at the firehouse. This is what was posted on an internet forum about the emergency response at Sandy Hook. I'm going to read it to you. The main sticking point is the EMS services did not behave within their normal scope. A mass shooting would have had trauma helicopters flying children out one after another, performing CPR the entire way to the hospital, and patients would be declared dead at the hospital after extensive measures were taken to try to save lives. I've been in the ER for five years, and we get all code blue patients. We get 80-year-old nursing home patients that have not been breathing for 20 minutes, with no chance of survival, and we perform CPR and necessary medical intervention with the chance that patients may regain a pulse. So even when someone's clearly dead, they still perform CPR. They still do everything to try to make sure they're actually dead. And they left the kids and the six adults and the killer in there in the school. Just it's why it doesn't make sense, man. I don't know. Yeah, it doesn't add up. Yeah. I'm with you. Absolutely. I'm with you. What what else you got to say? <laughs> it's in so far. Like, I don't know. Uh, I remember. Yeah, it's just. I remember the news. Uh, I don't remember. Uh, and I didn't. Not that I didn't pay a ton of attention to it, but uh, what year did this happen? Two thousand twelve. Yeah, I wasn't really. Years ago. I was. I was focused on myself a lot back then. Uh, yeah. Uh, so. But. But dude, most of America just watched the news. It was like, oh, what? that's crazy. Some people went out and donated, and but nobody actually went and looked deeper into it and, like, 
used critical thinking to decipher what the f these giant gaping uh, inconsistencies like they right. didn't nobody there acted correctly at all hmm. and nobody ever questioned it I me included I didn't question it till till a couple years ago so hmm. it's interesting yeah. I know I say that a lot during these things, but no, no, no. I mean, it's, it, it makes sense because it's when I first learned this information, I'm like, no, oh, no fucking way. Yeah. Like, really? Like how the fuck? All right. We'll keep going. We have established the point of entry. Uh, it was, uh, I can tell you it was, it's believed he was not voluntarily let into the school at all. Uh, that he forced his way into the school, but that's as far as we can go on that. Picture 16 highly trained Connecticut State Troopers entering this window at Sandy Hook Elementary School with their long rifles. Now, what you have to do when you post a picture of that shot out glass window, it is 42 and a third inches high, it is 35 and a third inches wide. Now, people have to picture these Connecticut SWAT team members and state troopers trying to crawl through that window. The three stooges are smarter than that. They would send Curly in the window, open the door for the other two. But try to picture 16 of them. And you know what makes me angry as a, a state trooper? When I used to have to fill out those reports, they're, they're sworn testimony. I can go to jail for falsifying it. But when they're looking inside, there are po Newtown police officers are already inside. Why <laughs> is to the window? Would you please open the door? Why would you risk getting cut on the broken glass? Then I saw the truck delivering porta potties, 11 porta potties. Hey, here's my question for you, fireman. Whenever have you had the worst mass casualty shooting in elementary school history and all the fire trucks are sitting at the fire station? They're all shiny, they ain't moved. And the worst traffic control ever seen. They blocked ambulances, people from coming, but they did get the porta potties there on time. So it took me about a month to figure out who the owner of the porta potty company was. It's called Chatfield Porta Potty out of uh, Southbury, Connecticut. I called them up. I said, I want to know who ordered them. When were they ordered? When were they ordered? Who paid for them? She called the police. <laughs> the Southbury Police Department, a sergeant called me the next morning, said, Do not ever call this out the porta potty company again or you'll be arrested. For what? Uh, harassment. Now, I want you to call the porta potty company. <laughs> and here's the thing. They got a porta potty company in Newtown, Connecticut. They got two of them. The entire campus is a crime scene. That means no one, no parent or anyone else is allowed to enter the crime scene. And they're actually delivered within three hours of the shooting. Here's my question to you. I want to know who the incident commander is who ordered porta potties. But they won't order trauma helicopters. Do you know they never let paramedics and EMTs inside the school the entire day? So Something first right, off man. the window, yeah. the window with the cops. The door is right there, <laughs> and they're all going through the window instead of just unlocking the door. When there's already cops inside to unlock the door and just let them in, they all went through the fucking window. I don't like it, man. It, I don't like it. Does it add up to you? <laughs> no, it doesn't make any fucking sense, yeah. dude. What the fuck? And then, yeah, you don't order trauma helicopters. You don't, you don't let paramedics threw all that traffic because every single ambulance was at the fire station firehouse which is up the road and the porta potty guy gets through <laughs> like what i mean i get people got to take a shit but excuse me this seems like a sticky situation yeah yeah it's speaking pretty, pretty of sticky. speaking of sticky situations this episode yeah. Is brought to you by Happy nah. Happy Nuts. Uh, do you ever? Uh, does it get hot and sticky outside where you're at? I know it's the middle of summer here. Uh, it's getting very warm, getting very sticky. Throw a little Happy Nuts on your on your taint and your chafing area, and it's a lotion that turns to powder, keeps you nice and dry, and smooth, no rash, no fuss, no muss. Happy Nuts. Hey, uh, show us the ingredients. Uh, ingredients, ingredients. Um, uh, water, uh, lotion, and powder. That's all it says. What's the lotion? So just lotion. It just says lotion. It just says lotion. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't just say lotion. I bet. <laughs> <laughs> it probably says a whole bunch of fucking words you can't pronounce. <laughs> yeah, a hundred percent. Do not put that shit on your nuts, bro. <laughs> Little Carmelita will never exist if you do that. Who? <laughs> you ain't never having a kid if you put that shit on your nuts. <laughs> You're right. Bottle's empty now. Anyways, wow. anyways, brought to you by Happy Nuts. 
Sorry. I had well, to, if you don't have any kids, then they don't have to be. Uh, I had well, they're not having the kids anyway. I had to. I had to get a word in for my sponsors. But anyways, go ahead. All right, here we go. Emphasizing the lack of urgency even more, let's take a look at this police dash cam video. At 12:21 p.m., just under an hour prior to Sally Cox Snacks. and Barbara Halstead coming out of the closet, no pun intended, of course, these officers decided it was a good idea to bust out the snacks, chips, bananas, and bottled water during a mass shooting investigation. Mind you, the seized innocent little first graders are allegedly just feet away from the vehicle, but somehow they were able to stomach and ingest food and beverages. These are the same officers who received millions of dollars in compensation from the federal government for healing. So they got time to eat. This shit happened like close to 11 o'clock, like 10, between 1030 and 11 o'clock. Like, and they're fucking eating at, they're eating at noon. It's, like, it's fucking lunchtime, bro. And that's why they got, dude, that's why they ordered the Porta John's bananas make you shit. All right. Yeah. That ad hey, that adds up. Okay. Okay, so you're on board with that one. That one that one makes sense. You know what I mean? If you're eating banana, you better yeah, there's gotta be a toilet around somewhere. You're gonna you're gonna have to drop a deuce. Yo, I just made uh it's called banana and ice cream for the first time. Where you just you just freeze some bananas and just blend the bananas, only the bananas. Yeah. T dude, it, it fixes a ice cream craving for real. I don't I don't get ice cream cravings. It fixes a frozen yogurt craving. Oh, I don't get those either. You don't get frozen yogurt anymore? No. I'm good for you. There isn't one five minutes from my house. Oh, you know? that makes sense. Totally. Oh, dude, do you remember those? I remember. Yeah. <laughs> we used to put down some frozen yogurt. Tubs were like Every night. this, bro. I like know. Like that. We would fucking just house that shit. <laughs> And then you'd be sitting over, you'd be sitting over around the, uh, the 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 chair, and be like, "My legs hurt. Can we get a couch? Can we get a couch?" My what legs, the fuck? My legs hurt. The fuck? My legs hurt real bad. <laughs> so the parents. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm off. Uh, yeah. Okay. The parents. The the parents of the children. Like this is this is what pe many people get like offended about. Like you're talking about it being fake, but the, what about the parents? You don't know. Yeah. All right. Well, here's a few of the parents and the eyewitnesses, and uh, let's just uh, let's get into it. Were they regular people? We'll see. Hi. As you probably noticed, I'm not the president. I'm just a citizen. And as a citizen, oh. I'm here at the White House today because I want to make a difference, I and I hope you will join me. My name is Francine Wheeler. My husband, David, is with me. Our younger son, Ben, age six, was age murdered six. in his first grade classroom on December 14th. Exactly four months ago, this weekend. I can tie my shoes. I can tie my shoes. How do grown-ups do it when it just gives me the blues? I'm never so confused as when I try to tie my shoes. Maybe I'm too slow. Can make a little bow. I pull the laces tight and then I almost break my toe. I only get confused when I try to tie my shoes. I've never asked for anything. Not from you or anyone. Now it's my turn to be selfish. It doesn't matter to whom these weapons were registered. It doesn't matter if they were purchased legally. The principal who, God bless her, lost her life, was just a very special person. And, and all the parents knew that. Two years ago, I called my eight-year-old son an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> now, how's that for great parenting? You know, in my defense, in my defense, it was a stressful situation. You can describe him again. He was naked. That's it. No height, weight, hair color. A very special person. And, and all the parents knew that. They're actors, bro. They're all actors and entertainers. All right, let's keep going. And then run down here. It was awful. It was awful. You doing okay, honey? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Uh, so we're actually running to the house to get her t-shirt and pair of shoes. What happened? What did you tell us anything? Only what she knows. I don't know if that's. Yeah, I got so. We don't have any information. If that weapon had been in place, he
But what happened instead... They're going to look at a script. 22 decades ago was that the assault weapons ban was left to expire. And they had started at that time, the CDC had started researching on ways to prevent gun violence. And what happened instead was that the NRA and the NSSF got a hold of some of our elected officials and they, and they were able to get them to stop trying to find out ways to get information to prevent gun violence while we weren't looking. They, um, while we weren't paying attention, they changed the laws. They let these things expire. Well, I think that a lot of things that people hear aren't true. And I know, I know the first couple of days I was just getting angry because I was hearing things that I knew didn't happen. Take us back to that moment. When did you first know something had gone wrong out here? Hearing loud popping noise. I thought I could see him from the knees down. See the legs. Right in front of you. 20 feet away. Facing his feet. His boots were facing my desk. And then he turned and walked away? And then turned. It was seconds. And then turned and walk, walked out. And you were there for the next four hours? Nearly. Yeah. Yeah. It was 1.15 before, you know, we... We, we were petrified, and we didn't know how many there could have been. And we were listening. You couldn't hear a whole lot, but we did. I mean, we heard screaming and the gunshots. And I know. Richard and Krista Rico say that talking about their Jessica brings tiny moments of comfort. And she was a ball of fire. She ruled the roost. She uh, our little CEO. We called her. You know, she was she was the boss. I knew exactly what she was wearing. I knew I was going to see her little ponytail come around the corner and her jacket and her black glittery Uggs that she had on that morning. And I knew I was going to see her, and I didn't. And they finally around 1:15 asked everybody to sit down, and um, they said that um, it was a tragic day in Newtown today. And 20 children were killed. I was amazed at the strength that Grace's parents showed. They say it is Grace who is guiding them through these difficult days. What do you want people to know about Grace? Well, Grace had such a great spirit. She was a kind and gentle soul, and uh, she was just the light and love of our family. And I remember that morning putting her on the bus. She had a habit of blowing kisses, but then she'd give me a big little liver lick, like, mm. <laughs> but then she, I knew she was so happy to go off and get there. So I'm sure we have anger and we're upset and we don't know why. So we'll just take the lead from them and we will not go down that road, but we'll, we'll let them guide us. It's a hard thing though, isn't it? She seemed... yeah. <clears throat> we're going to go on and we're going to use her positive energy um, to help guide us forward. What? If, if... What did you say? <laughs> if she's a parent of a kid who was murdered, why does she seem so happy about it? <laughs> exactly. She was like, yo, it, let, let, let's say her kid really was murdered. She fucking hated having a, that kid. <laughs> See how happy she was that that fucker is yeah. gone, bro? Yeah. <laughs> no, she's, like, she's like, eh. I guess we'll just yeah. have to roll with the punches. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what the fuck? I just, I won't go down that road. What the fuck? Yeah. She was borderline laughing. Yeah. They're all fucking, dude, it, they're all, bro. Okay. It's it's uh, one giant fucking joke that they played on everybody. This is wild, bro. Yo, check out this next guy. This is the best, this is the best, this is the best parent uh, news conference I've uh, out of any shooting this is the best one this this guy he nails it he does such a good job you ready mm -hmm. so we'll see if uh, Robbie Parker I assume he's going to come out to the microphones now and make a statement uh, looks like the family is there and they're getting ready to make uh, to come to the microphone so we'll listen up. okay So my name is Robbie Parker. My family is one of the families that lost a child yesterday in this elementary school shootings here in Connecticut. As the deep pain begins to settle into our hearts, we find comfort reflecting on the incredible person that Emily was. I guess that's it. Um, yeah. Did you see him smiling and shit when he first walked up? Yeah. He's like smiling and shit and he goes. Whoosh. Yeah. <laughs> he had to get ready. Do you believe him? Uh, <laughs> Do you believe him? I don't I don't I don't believe none of this bullshit, bro. <laughs> yeah, I'm with you. Why do I, why do I why do I feel like we're about to watch some porno? This is some terrible acting. <laughs> the girls never came. 
The girls never came. Neither did you. <laughs> As, I'm just. You're right. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> You're right. Not in a this while. is terrible. <clears throat> yeah. It's like porn acting. That's what I'm saying. This is terrible. Yeah. All right. We're going to move on from the parents. And uh, this guy gives a little bit of a summary on a bunch of the inconsistencies. One can't help but see a single constant theme. That is the overwhelmingly consistent approach by the authorities to conceal and redact any critical information that might prove or disprove this event. Is it too much to ask for the Connecticut State Police to release the mass evacuation video that they claim to have on their dash cams? Evidence that shouldn't be harmful or disrespectful to anybody. As we have seen, the police dash cam timeline does not match what is alleged to have occurred. With this knowledge, we can only conclude that the Connecticut State Police have lied. Or what about information regarding Adam Lanza? As the alleged killer, any release of Lanza's information should not be disrespectful or traumatizing. So where is Lanza's driver's license in the crime scene photos? Why was he allegedly carrying his brother's ID? And why don't we see a copy of that in the photos? If the Ryan Lanza ID story was fabricated, then why was he brought into custody miles away from the crime scene in New Jersey? There are endless questions that need to be answered. We're not going so far as to ask for potentially gruesome pictures of deceased bodies or pools of blood consistent with a mass shooting. But because the Connecticut State Police has redacted much less traumatizing information, one can't help but ask, do these photos even exist? Bulldozing the school to the ground instead of making renovations and a $50 million destruction and rebuilding project in which consigli construction was required to sign a gag order only adds even more fuel to the fire. Was the demolition done to conceal the truth of what happened that day? So, they gave the, the, the Connecticut fifty million dollars to demolish and rebuild it. Fifty million dollars. Yeah. Also, they were talking about uh, how come they haven't released any crime photos. You remember the Alex Jones episode where the guy was talking about how. One of his one of one of his uh, colleagues got access to the pictures, and there was no bodies, there was no pools of blood, yeah, there was no, there was nothing. I think it's uh, never mind, I can't say that. <clears throat> um, you think it's what? It ain't adding up, buds. It's not. It ain't adding up. It's not. Um, so now we're gonna get into the the uh, the um, suspected perpetrator of the uh, situation. Okay. All right. 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 Here he is. media has so many inconsistencies that one has to seriously question the skills of those in the media or one has to ask how such conflicting reports could emerge from one true story and one has to ask how such reported events could take place in a physical world that can't accommodate the things that supposedly occurred at Sandy Hook for instance a lightweight 20 year old youth carrying multiple firearms managing them changing magazines and accurately consecutively shooting 26 people between 3 and 11 times each in a matter of five to seven minutes. 
Men who are much bigger with extensive weapons experience and proficient shooting skills say they themselves could have hardly done what Adam Lanza did. A little target practice with mom does not produce 26 victims in five to seven minutes. What'd you think? Yeah, that's, uh, that's. He had two handguns, an AR, and they said, I can't remember how many, but they said he had like over a hundred rounds and this kid weighed 112 pounds. I mean, it's, it's doable, but he's going to be very slow, right? Cause that that's a hundred rounds. Isn't that much to carry around? Um, it, two handguns I could carry easily and an AR, but that is, it's going to get heavy. Oh, I know it's going to get heavy, <clears throat> but that's not even like, I can, I can see carrying that the proficiency they're talking about. That's incredible. Yeah, because you're you're going to have to get headshots, Jesus. <laughs> you know, or yeah. or you know, like up upper, you know, a zone chest, a zones, like that's like right here, you know. Yeah, yeah. You're gonna have to get in this little a zone here, or or a headshot <clears throat> with twenty six people in seven minute, eight minutes. What they said. Yeah, that's. I mean that they did say he had Asperger's and that Asperger's people are usually highly intelligent. (laughs) No, seriously. Does it make you a good shot though? You don't know. You don't know. You don't know. It might. And I want to, I want to say this because we're laughing a bunch. No kids died. That's the whole point of this episode. No kids died. And and if, if they want to sue me like they did to Alex Jones for one point, two trillion dollars or some shit and they actually recently said that they'll settle for 85 billion the families will settle for 85 billion from alex jones uh if you want to come sue me like you did alex jones please do it because i would actually show evidence and i wouldn't cave and pretend like it didn't happen like alex jones did because he's controlled opposition and the whole point of them taking alex jones to court was so he could say yeah i knew i know it happened it definitely happened but uh it's they want you not to talk about it, so they need to use Alex Jones as an example. Yeah, I see what you're saying. They chose him because uh, one, he's one, he's got a big mouth. He's the biggest conspiracy theorist right. anybody could think of. Right, and if they so sue if you him, shut him down, right, 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 you're gonna lead people, other people, not to talk about it. I get it. Yeah, so please come, come sue me, families. Don't, please don't put that out there. Cause I'll win. We don't have enough viewers to for them to sue me anyway. You never know. I hope I hope we get enough viewers that they can sue me. That'd be awesome. It only takes one, dude. <laughs> <laughs> go go for it. <laughs> please please do it. I want them to try because I would actually have a defense. I wouldn't go to a kangaroo court like Alex Jones did and just fucking fuck controlled opposition piece of shit. Hopefully. He truly does lose everything because of it. That would be amazing. That'd be awesome. All right. I hope that's the plan, that he loses everything. Anyway, uh, here's more about uh, this this fucking 12-year-old. I know he's 20, but he looks like he's fucking 12. We actually know about Adam Lanza. Perhaps digging into his past life can lead to some sort of justification for the millions of dollars spent on mental health as a result of the event. But it seems as if his entire existence is shrouded in mystery. After 2009, there is very little trace of him at all. The younger pictures of the boy portrayed as Adam Lanza are of a joyful, smiling child, while the recent images issued out by the media are psychotic looking. The grainy, googly-eyed photos that we see appear to be altered to create the illusion of a deranged psychopath. There are unnatural straight-edge lines on the neck area. There are blurred-out areas near the mouth, and the googly-eyed effect is, well, a nice attempt at creating a mentally disturbed kid. Peter and Nancy divorced in 2009. At this time, Adam disappears from the radar, and his brother Ryan appears, causing many people to believe that Adam and Ryan are one and the same. Now, we can't say with any certainty that this is the case. Nonetheless, the media was careless at times, and outright deceitful in their attempt to get an accurate portrayal of Adam. One example comes from the Joshua Flashman interview. Attempting to give motive to the shooting, Fox News reached out to Flashman, a native of Sandy Hook, Monroe area, an aspiring actor and who supposedly had inside information regarding the Lanzas. 
He was quoted by Fox News falsely stating that Nancy Lanza was a kindergarten teacher and that she loved the kids more than she loved him and that she was planning on having him committed. A nice attempt at creating motive. Shortly after the article was published, Flashman took to the comments section and his Twitter page to dispute how Fox portrayed him as an insider. He states the following. I told the reporter about what was being said in the town, nothing more, nothing less. I told the reporter what the people in town were saying about Adam Lanza's motive, and next thing I know, I'm intimately acquainted with the Lanza family and knew Adam's motives firsthand. Funny, I didn't know that. Fox approached me and spent two days trying to convince me to go on the record, but I just wanted to get on TV, right? Yes, this is how the media operated during the onset of the event. Hmm. So a guy supposedly knew him and said all this stuff about him, and then he was like, I didn't, I never said I fucking knew the kid. I was just saying what other people were saying. Here is one of the most damning things, and it actually, it's, it played in the intro, sort of. I'll just play it real quick. That police find a long gun of some type in the trunk of the black vehicle that's been cordoned off at the elementary school all day long today. It's entirely possible the car belongs to the shooting suspect. Police are seen clearing the gun's chamber. At least one cartridge comes out of the gun. This just shows there is still much to learn about what happened today, and police are still very much in the middle of what will surely be a lengthy investigation. But again, some type of long gun has just been found in the last half hour in the trunk of the black vehicle that's been currently taped off outside of Sandy Hook Elementary School. Actually, we were able to confirm NBC News earlier uh, that the suspect had driven to the school in his mother's vehicle. Uh, that vehicle that we've seen has been cordoned off all day, uh, and now we see that gun pulled out of the trunk there. Um, two other guns were found in the school next to uh, near the shooter um, who is also dead. But you said it was the long rifle that was used? Yes. So that uh, the Dr. Carver, that bald doctor that you just saw, mm -hmm. he's getting he's giving an interview um, and he said they ask him. Uh, so I uh, the handgun and the rifle. What, what was what was used? He said uh, from every everything that I've seen it was the rifle that was used the, the caliber of bullets was the rifle that was used and um, Later on another guy says uh, you said it was the the long the long gun that was that was used He said and the uh, doctor goes yes. He goes. I thought that was found in the car in the trunk so Adam Lanza in eight minutes Shot everybody, went back out to the car, put the rifle in the trunk, went back into the school, and then shot himself. Is that what happened? I'm asking, is that is that what happened? I wasn't there, but... Um... Do you know why the rifle was found in the trunk? Because they wanted it to be seen on TV. To they wanted it to be seen on TV that this is the gun that was found in the truck, a rifle, yeah. an AR. That makes sense. Come take, come take our ARs. That makes sense. They don't use <coughs> thinking when they do these stupid drills. They don't, they don't think about what they're doing. They just, oh, this would be good. Let's put this in the truck so they can find it on the news. They don't actually, they don't think about. They're giant plot holes. Well, they think people are. They think people are dumb. Well, most people are. Agreed, but not everyone is. I know. I agree with that. Uh, here is. So was uh, Sandy a real school? I requested copies of all work orders from March the first through December 13th that were initiated by the principal, the assistant principal, or the head custodian on any type of maintenance work orders. I want you to open your heart, open your eyes. And the only way you'll ever understand this is if you're about to enroll your child in this elementary school, and what you're about to see, would you enroll your child? And take a look at the first picture. This is a school that every national news media, the second day after the incident, talked about what a pristine, what a vanguard school. What a picturesque. It is the school that made people from all over Connecticut move to just so they could enroll their child in that special school. Look at the bushes all overgrown. And what do you see running down the side of the building? It's mold. Now think about it. These are kids. It's an entrance. It's a main entrance. The picture should speak for itself. Look at the rotten wood. This is an exit to a playground. 
How in the world did the wheelchair kids get out of the back of that school out of these portables when they don't even have a ramp? They're not even ABA compliant. Broken gates. Now, this picture was taken on December 14, 2012. And if you look at the writing, it's already been marked that somebody's going to do some heavy-duty digging. See the initials on the, uh, con on the uh, asphalt? Call before you dig. There's a construction bin by the storage shed. Everything you look at, it looks like it's been so neglected. Look all at the base of the wall. Look how moldy it is. Air conditioner in December. What happens, most school districts will remove those uh, uh, air conditioners and they, they patch up the window. They don't follow code. They don't follow procedures. And again, hanging wire. And take a look at the roof. I had their five-year building maintenance plan and the roof in 2010, 2011, inside that plan, which I have, there was no money budgeted for 210, 211, no money budgeted for 211, 212, no money budgeted for 212, 213. It also said that all the carpet inside that school needed to be replaced. It's a serious safety violation. The maintenance of this school is totally ignored. If there's one thing that I believe in is that we have pride. We have pride in how our school looks. This is mold, this is mildew. And then if you look at the grass, that is long, long-term neglect. And again, take a look at the mold. I mean, this stuff is growing. It does not happen overnight. It's just filthy. I don't believe it's a functioning school. Nobody, nobody who loves their children would ever send them to this filthy school. I've spent my lifetime keeping schools clean. And I'm gonna tell you what, from the time children arrive, I mean this with all my heart, I want my school to be clean. I, it's called pride. I don't see any pride here. Look at the corners. What do we call this stuff? Look at the bottom of the doors. It's all water damage. It takes a long, long time to get mucky door frames and wall tiles. Those, that's a watermark. That is a sign of flooding. And again, Dawn Hawksburg would have never let her school look this way. All it shows is neglect, neglect, neglect. You got room number 11, but you got a teacher placard that says 10. At least they ought to get the door numbers right. I challenge any teacher, any dean of student system, principal, counselors, please, as you're looking at this, tell me that's who we are. Tell me this is pride in our education. Please. So all the door numbers are different yeah. and fucking mold everywhere. And there's actually a picture. I wish I, I would wish I could find it. I can't remember where I saw it, but it says is uh, in one of the classrooms. It says mm. March into reading. It's December, right? Why is there a March <laughs> March into reading inside of one of the uh, one of the classrooms? Uh, do you think some weird or sick plot to one get money to rebuild the school wall? trying to stop people from having uh, guns. You think that this was like a, a joint effort? Oh, we can, we can advance gun control and, and get a whole bunch of money to rebuild the school. I don't think it was just to rebuild the school. I think it was to get a whole bunch of money because oh, okay. we're, we're going to get into a lot more about, about payouts and shit like that. Gotcha. Like every, every single parent got at least, I think it was like at least $2 million. And every year, they're still coming out with Noah's Fund. Mm. Donate to us for our kid who died 12 years ago in a school. They're salesmen. Gotcha. They, they quit acting, and they became salesmen. So, so here's another one uh, uh, going in with how it wasn't a functioning school. The country it's one of the biggest corporations there is okay mm -hmm. cisco food they deliver the food to restaurants to schools all across america so i got a copy of their bills what i did i asked for shipping invoices from september 1 2012 to december 15 2012 and all i cared about is where is this food being shipped to okay is it elementary remember we're talking about the 13th Shooting never happened. I just want to know who is delivering the food. The same elementary school on 12 Dickinson Drive on December 13, 12, I mean, all the way back to September, right? And that, to me, would be a very simple request, okay? What I found in the documents that we received is that from 9-1-2012 to December 15, yeah, Cisco was delivering food the same elementary school. The problem is the address has changed is being sent to 375 Fan Hill Road in Monroe, Connecticut. So that makes you sit back and ask yourself, well, what are the kids eating at Central Elementary School on 12 Dickinson right. Drive? 
<laughs> All right. <clears throat> yeah. So it wasn't even a school. It wasn't even a functioning school. The school wasn't even a real school. And you know about eating. You got to eat every day. Yeah, I'd be pissed if I if I ordered like Uber Eats and it was going to the wrong address for a fucking a year. Yeah, would you keep ordering it? No. <laughs> you... What the fuck? Yeah. Well. Can you imagine being a first grader and not going in, and going to the lunchroom and them not having those little pouches of chocolate milk that you stab the thing oh, in? Oh, I hated bag milk. <laughs> I hated bag milk. Bag milk. Get your shit together. <laughs> Get your shit together. Um, set some set some walls up. So if there was no school and the kids didn't get killed, what was this whole thing besides a gun grab? Money grab. That too, yeah. Money grab. There you go. Money's and guns. Money's and guns. Money's and guns. Yes, sir. Ever since Homeland Security and FEMA got together under one umbrella, you need to look up the word capstone. Research the word capstone. Do you know what capstone is? Capstone exercise is a whole community event. Is that what this is? Yes. Well, Mr. Halvey, Wolfgang, how did the whole community get involved in this? Nobody died. It was an exercise, a whole community exercise. <laughs> capstone is called a FEMA, a Homeland Security FEMA capstone exercise. It comes from the, it starts at the president's desk. What did he use? He used Air Force One to fly into Newtown to pick all of those parents up. And you know none of those parents live in Newtown today? Now go to, are you ready? Go to Columbine. 14 students died at Columbine, 23 seriously shot and injured. Half the parents who lost a child still live in Columbine. If you read Capstone, okay, it must be an entire community event. It has to be faith-based. All the churches have to be involved. The funeral homes have to be involved. Everybody. Do you think that the residents in Newtown want to be remembered for the rest of their lives as the town of the massacre? No. We want to be remembered as the bridge to a kinder new world. I believe the whole community. I believe the Catholic Church. I believe the fire department. And let me tell you why they did it. They've got over $200 million since that exercise. Newtown has got over $200 million from the federal government to use it any way they want. $29 million donated by people from all across the country. And then every parent, this, this is one that bothers me, being a principal, okay? I've had children die in our school. Yeah, we've had fundraiser. But we never paid a parent $281,000 because their child died in our school from us. Each parent got $281,000 and they complained because they wanted more. Are you ready? Not one lawsuit by any of the parents have been filed as of today. Why would they not file a lawsuit? On the flip side, every parent was paid $281,000, and those parents actually wrote a letter to the Attorney General, George Jepson of Connecticut, saying they want more money from all the donations. They're complaining they didn't get enough money. Yes. This is wild, bro. <laughs> Bro, there's, there's a lot more of these that have happened too. Like, I think we'll get into more of them. Like, I want to do the Buffalo store. I want to do uh, the Houston school. I want to do Vegas. I want to do the Boston marathon. All of them. There's fucking plot holes galore in all of them. Hmm. All of them. You like football? Love football. All right. That consented to five to zero. You should have seen field trips for 26 children going to the to the Super Bowl in New Orleans, which is an out-of-state field trip, which has to be approved by the principal, the superintendent, and the school board. Nowhere on any of those documents have I reviewed. Can you find that field trip signed and approved? That's what I'm looking for, and it should be on the consent agenda. And the reason I say that, sir, is because if you look at the document that he just provided to me. You can actually see a field trip being approved on the consent agenda. Field trips are approved on consent agendas. You just cannot find the one that I'm looking for, and that's why I picked January the 23rd, because that's the last possible day for a field trip to be approved going to the Super Bowl out of state. Ladies and gentlemen, in celebration of our beautiful country, performing together the same elementary school chorus from Newtown, Connecticut, and Grammy and Oscar award winner Jennifer Hudson.
<laughs> Bruh. Here's a question I have Bruh. for everybody who's listening. Where are the 26 kids from the Super Bowl? Where did they go? What are their names? Why were they given a gag order by the NFL and CBS Sports never to talk about what they saw at the Super Bowl? Who gives little children a gag order? What do you think? <laughs> we can stop the episode. You already know. You already know. This is some baby back bullshit, bro. Bro. <laughs> it's so obvious, dude, because it's... There's so much that's like... What? Why would they use the same fucking kids that got... They have to tell us. <laughs> they they got to shove it in our faces, and if we don't fucking question it, then we ag- we agree to it. I hate I hate that I hate that that they have to tell us. I don't think they do have to. Tell us. <laughs> I just think they're fucking stupid. Yeah, sure, bud. This is- and who gives kids ga- kids a gag order? And how come they didn't name the twenty six kids? Wouldn't wouldn't this is what would really happen? They would put those twenty six kids on like Good Morning America and shit, and be like, "Hey, how did you feel about singing at the Super Bowl yeah. and, and giving your school pride?" And it'd be a huge puff piece. You know what I mean? Yeah. Shit's bonkers, bruh. You okay? Yeah, I just didn't hear. It. I, I was making sure my. My fridge was still running here. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah. So, what do you think about the kids being the kids and the, uh, you know? The <laughs> <laughs> it becomes so obvious. Yeah, it's pretty pretty wild. I'm getting I'm getting, I'm getting a little upset. My feelings were taken advantage of. And they're trying to take away Annie from you. Come and take it. I'm gonna take it. Yeah. All right. Well, let's keep going. We're almost. We're almost done. Hey, 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 Joe, come and take it yourself. Stop. No, no, not you, Joe. Oh. Stumbling, bumbling. Where am I, at? Joe, Joe Robin? Joe Robin at Biden. Stumbling, bumbling, lost president day. Uh, I will probably do Biden next week. I w- I hope he comes and personally tries to take it. Yeah. I think that'll be a little hard. Let's keep going. Here's more pictures of kids that match the photos from Sandy Hook. This one could be someone just fucking around, but the kids do look like the the right. older versions. You know I mean? Yeah. Um, Can't really tell, but I believe you. Yeah. <laughs> I believe you. Uh, come on. Let's go. How much time did they give this picture? What the fuck are we doing here? Would you be surprised to find out that in Sandy Hook, Connecticut, that on the date of 12-25-2009, that almost every home in Connecticut was paid off. Many people were given homes. No. And if they already lived there, their home was paid off. If you look at the assessor's online database for Connecticut, and look at any Wait till you see the date. In this area. We don't, we're at the assessor's online database for Newton, Connecticut, which is where Sandy Hook is located at. Here is uh, Gene Lawson's house, okay? 22 Riverside Road. Wife named Marilyn. Okay. Now let's move on down. This is a says appraised value is two hundred and five thousand. Says ownership history on twelve twenty five two thousand nine. Christmas day. Zero. Okay. Now this ain't a fluke. This is actually almost every town, almost every house in the entire city. The whole town of was bought off on Christmas day two thousand nine. Let me show you some more. Now let me explain to you. I have checked all of the roads that lead and come around and through this area. Okay. Not only this area. Okay. It's much bigger than this. We're talking billions of dollars in real estate. Okay. Literally billions. You can come. Pretty much every house that will be in this area that you see right here. Okay, here we are looking at Riverside again. This is uh, actually a vacant lot that's on the Riverside. Even it was transacted to this James Short on 1225-2009 for $0. Here's 72 Riverside Road. Robert and Susan Newt, N-U-T-E, right? $200,000 value on the property. Sell date 1225-2009, $0. And here you go, the state of Connecticut getting in on the action. This is 112 Riverside Road, okay? It's a piece of land, okay? Was transferred to them on 1225-2009, Christmas Day, when everything is closed. Billions of dollars of real estate changed hands and was paid off in Sandy Hook, Connecticut. Next one, 85 Riverside Road, Paris, uh, Eric and Christina Paradis or something like that. $250,000 appraised value. 
Okay, here's a good example for you. Okay, look at this. It was owned by James and Lauren Ballou or whoever. Okay, uh, it was purchased on 4 28 2004 for $331,000, uh, which is way above the appraised value here. Okay, then Eric and Christina bought it on 2 2 of 2006 for $380,000. And then whammo, on 12 25 Christmas Day, they got a big Christmas present and their mortgage was paid off. 219 Riverside Road. You see the name there? I'm not going to try to pronounce it. Valued at 125000 They purchased it on 6 15 2006. On 12 25 2009, they got a big Christmas present paid off. Here's a piece of bare land at 50 Riverside Road, Mark and Lorraine Reed. Uh, got it for free on 1225-2009. Making land 2.61 acres. Here's a duplex, actually, at 167 Riverside Road. Mar Maureen and Robert Gleason. Big Christmas present, 1225-2009, when the courthouse and everything was normally closed. How did this happen? 59 Riverside Road. Janice Markey. 1225-2009. Free house. Here you go, 51 Riverside Road, Newtown, or town of Newton. Okay. Guess what? They got a piece of land for free on 1225-2009. Okay. 3.24 acres, R1 zoning. Free land. The city got free land. The city got free houses. The state got free land. The state got free houses. Everybody in town gets a house. It's like an Oprah show, but instead of giving away cars, you get a car, you get a car, you get a car. They give away houses. Everybody gets a house for free. Unbelievable. Now, how far out does this buyout program go from the city school? You know, how, how many houses did they buy? So all the houses in San were paid off on Christmas Day in 2009, three years before the shooting. <clears throat> Bro, they, they do this years in advance, man. But what about, like, the heroes? Like, the cops and, like... What about them? What'd they get? Okay, here's our list. We got a whole bunch of troopers, sergeants, detectives, FBI detectives. And you scroll down the list, and we get down to the civilian and law enforcement support. And I saw these names here. So I decided to look up the names to see what they did. Boudreaux, Matson, Bellow, Lundquist, Varney, Wright, Zito, Rosa. The same last names on several of these people have all won the lottery in the last two years. Except for the Lundquists, which won $4 million back in 1998. But we have Varney's, Boudreaux, Plored, Wright, all winning lottery. Once I got to the third or fourth person with the same matching last name, I said, God, you know, Plored is not exactly a common last name. Is Douglas Plored related to Christine Plored? Rowe is not exactly a common last name. Come up and win Connecticut lottery within the same year as the same shooting right before or right after. Or Varney, a V name. Again, Varney, V-A-R-N-E-Y. Not exactly most common last name. Are these relatives that are receiving lottery payments? And this one right here kind of is just weird. Bruh. So all the heroes and shit and the family members won the lottery in Connecticut. What'd you think, bud? I love your reaction <laughs> during the videos. You're like, <laughs> your whole face just changes. You're like, it's such bullshit, <laughs> bro. What the fuck? Yeah. 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 <laughs> All right, let's just keep going. We're almost done. Yeah, I'm pissed, man. I'm getting pissed. It all began when the website for the Arlington Red Devils posted a webpage on their site with a link to a document entitled A Guide on How to Talk to Children About Santa. The guide was originally published by Crisis Management Institute. The date of the article shown on the page itself is 12-10-2012. The URL of the page also includes that date. As we just outlined, the only date that we can truly rely on to tell us when the page was last accessed by Googlebot and indexed is the date it was cached, or the cache date. To see that, we simply find the cached link for the page, and when Google's cached version of the page loads, that date will always appear in Google's disclaimer box right at the top of the page. Remember though, the cached date is updated each time Googlebot returns to visit the page, so going through this process after almost two years would likely show a much more recent date, but thankfully many people were curious enough in the days immediately after the event to grab a screenshot of what the page looked like back then, and those screenshots show Google's cached date for the page as 10-13-2012, one day prior to the actual event. So, let's add it up and see what we have here. Disregarding the content of the web page itself, which we've learned can be changed over time, we start with the URL of the page. As you can see, the URL contains the phrase, talking with your children about the Sandy tragedy. That can only be a specific reference to the shooting event. Next, we see that Google reports a cached date of 12 13 2012 for that URL. Remember, URLs can't change or Google considers it a new page. And I might add that just because we see clear evidence that Google had last indexed the page on the 13th, it's very possible the page had been indexed earlier, say the 10th, at which time Google's cache date would have shown the 10th. Case closed. Here we have an irrefutable example of foreknowledge. Of so there's a website that came out before the shooting called How to Talk to Your Kids About the, the Shooting. United Way had a charity. I don't have that clip, but United Way had a charity set up on the 11th. December 11th for its like three days before the shooting.
It's some bullshit, bro. It's just, it's just bad at this point. It's, it's just bullshit. Here is a clip from. Well, it's not a clip from a movie, but it's. Uh, I'll just play it. Here you go. The satellite image of Hook Elementary School, according to Google Earth, it actually exists and is located in Newtown, Connecticut. Therefore, I consider it confirmed that the school exists in Newtown, Connecticut. This is a fictional map of Gotham City. It was created by persons unknown, but the prop master for the Dark Knight Rises movie lived in Newtown, Connecticut. This map appears in the movie The Dark Knight Rises at approximately 1 hour, 58 minutes, and 41 seconds. Get a GPS on it so we can start to figure out how to put it down. The Gotham that appears on this map is not real. It does not exist anywhere on Earth. On the Gotham map appears an island. The map labels this island as Sandy and the circle area here is strike point one. Or maybe this other area is strike point one. Or maybe they both are, I don't know. I have oriented the map of Google Earth to zero degrees north. I centered elementary school in Google Earth and viewed it from an altitude of 23,326 feet, which puts the map's scale at one mile and one foot, about the same as the Gotham map, plus one foot. Sorry, but I got too frustrated trying to get it any more precise. After resizing the Gotham map so that the scales were identical, I placed the red strike zone circle over here is the result. Interestingly, the highways line up a little bit, giving us similar features on two different maps. Both are of a place called Sandy. One is fictional, one is real. Where one says Strike Zone 1, the other was the location of a school shooting. A lot of people want to say that this is too much to be a coincidence, and come to many conclusions about the meaning. I prefer just to enjoy a good coincidence for what it is. The map in the movie says That's it. That's all I got. It's fucked. So, it's fucked up, bro. Uh, so taking in all of that evidence. Yeah. Uh, do you think in December 14th, 2012, that there was a tragedy or no? Hmm. Let me replay a little bit in my mind. Fuck no. Fuck out of here. That's some bullshit, bro. It's a. Nah, I, I really don't think there was a, a, sh a shooting at that shoe. <laughs> your, your first response was the best one. Because it's fucking bullshit. It's fucking bullshit, bro. Got people crying over it, donating their fucking hard earned money to these fucking criminals, uh, tr trying to help the government take away our fucking our protection. It's a fucking joke, dude. It's a joke. Yeah, I agree. It's bullshit. That's yep. some baby back bullshit. I'm going to preface this before that you even. Uh, well, I don't even need to preface. I was going to say, if, if this isn't on YouTube, it's on fucking Rumble. So, you know. Yeah. You're probably going to take this down. See, ya. See you guys on Rumble. Uh, I'm going to have to block out a lot of times all these videos say, uh, yeah. you know, she's. So. Beep, beep, beep. <laughs> well, I'll just... Uh, I'm not going to be annoying about it. Oh, okay. <laughs> just going to pause it out. So I got you on this one. You got me, buddy. You're on board. Yeah, you got You're me. On board. This one was, uh, this was a, a strike. Slam fucking dunk. Strike down the middle. Uh, hole yeah. in one. alley -oop, slam dunk. Easy peasy, touchdown, Randy Mouse. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> All right, bro. Well, uh, yeah. All right. We're good. We're done. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. All right. Next week, we'll talk about Biden and if he's Biden. And, uh, you know. That poor old man. Somebody needs to put him in a nursing home. Poor old man. That dude has done horrible and speakable things to children and people. And you called him poor. <laughs> I'm just saying, he don't even realize who he is anymore, man. He, because he's not him anymore. We'll get into it next week. All right, we'll get into it next week. All right, all right, bro. Joseph, thanks for coming along on this journey, buddy. Joseph, yes, sir. Love you. Godspeed. Love you. Godspeed, homie. You've reached the offices of the Godspeed podcast. We are currently closed. Please leave your information and someone will return your call within 24 business days. Thank you. Brian Dave at CERN. 
actually got into the Connecticut state files and discovered photographs there that, for example, down a hallway, where you're supposed to have the body of uh, Don Hofspring, the school principal, and Mary Sherlock, the school psychologist, lying in pools of blood. There are not only no bodies, but there are no pools of blood. In another the classroom, where there's supposed to be a stack of little kids' bodies, there are not only no, no bodies and no blood, but there are no school desks, no school chairs. All the furniture is shoved up to the side of the wall. In other words, he not only got proof, out of the Connecticut state files that it had been a mass murder, but that it wasn't even an operating school.